Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Tutorial to Power Switches. This tutorial is presented by Dr. Firuz Zare. So in this example we have to find the conduction and switching loss. This is the voltage waveform and this is the current through the switch. So basically when the switch is off assuming that the leakage current to the switch is zero so that's why there is not any conduction loss associated with 10 of time and this is a transient that means the switch is getting off and this is the transient when the switch is getting on so the voltage drop across the switch is V on which is basically 2 volts and the current to the switch is 10 amps so when the switch is off the voltage across the switch is 500 volts so we can find the conduction loss when the switch is on and we can find the switching loss when the switch is getting on and off so let's start with conduction loss to find the conduction loss we need to basically multiply the voltage across the switch with the current through the switch and over the time which is basically this time so if one cycle is 100 microsecond so if this point is 50 microsecond so this point is 50 microsecond plus T on so T on is 1 microsecond that means this time is 51 microsecond so the time that the switch is in on a state is 100 minus 51 minus 51 microsecond over TS which is 100 microsecond so in this case 2 times of 10 amps times of 49 over 100 is the conduction loss which is basically 90 8 times of 10 over 100 or the conduction loss in this case is 9.8 watt and then we can look at the switching loss basically to find the switching loss either for on or off state switching states we need to calculate this area associated with switching loss so I think the best step to find that one is to draw the power waveform so if we multiply current and voltage then we get this power waveform this peak is V off times of I on because this is the I on and this voltage is V off so we can find the peak of this waveform so similar for this case which is basically V off times of I on so the point is that this cycle this switching time is 1 microsecond same as 10 on time 1 microsecond so this power this peak value is 500 times of 10 that means 5000 watt same as here so in order to find the average we need to find this area which is basically this height 
times of this side over 2 so that means for 10 on loss we have 500 times of 1 microsecond divided by 2 that's the energy divided by switching cycle which is 100 microsecond so in this case we have 50 over 2 or 25 watt so now we can find the switching loss for off state which is basically same as switching loss for on state because this switching time is same as this switching time so in this case the switching loss for 10 off time is 25 watt so finally we can say that the total switching loss which is switching loss for off state plus switching loss for on state is 25 plus 25 is 50 watts and peak conduction was 9.8 watts so the total loss for a switch in this case is 59.8 watts so in this question we have a DC voltage which is basically 200 volts plus minus 10 percent and when we apply gate signal we turn on this tyrester but the point is that when we remove the gate signal we have to find the current through the tyrester and if the current is less than latching current that means the tyrester will be turned off so in order to find the best signal for this tyrester we have to be sure that at the end of this gate signal the current through the tyrester is more than 50 milliamp so now let's look at the worst case let's look at the input voltage when input voltage is with this tolerance plus minus 10 percent that means minimum and maximum input voltage are 220 volts and 180 volts so in worst case means that we have minimum voltage across the circuit and in this case that can increase the current that means compared to this voltage level we may need longer time to be able to increase the current through the inductor let's look at the inductor basically the minimum and maximum values for this inductor is 0.95 millihenry and 1.05 millihenry so we have to consider this value for worst case because basically large inductor requires more time to increase the current in a particular level so in this case the input voltage is 180 volts and inductance value is 1.05 millihenry so now we can find the minimum pulse width to be able to turn it on and keep it on when we remove the gate signal so 
let's look at the case when the tyreser is in on state that means the input voltage which is DC appears across the inductor so the voltage across the inductor VL equals to V in so V in is 180 equals to VL which is L di dt or L is 1.05 millihenry times of delta I over delta T so in this case delta T equals to 1.05 times of 10 minus 3 over 180 times of delta I so basically the latching current should be considered in this equation because when we apply gate signal and turn on the tyrester then the current through the tyrester and through the inductor is increased so basically this is delta I if this is current waveform so we have to be sure that at the end of this pulse the current reach to the latching current so if latching current is 50 milliamps then we should consider in this equation so that means delta T equals to 1.05 over 180 times of 10 minus 3 times of 50 milliamps which is 10 minus 3 or that equals to 1.05 times of 50 over 180 times of 10 minus 6 or we can simplify that one which is five point twenty five over eighteen marks a second so this is the minimum pulse width to guarantee that the tyristor current or inductor current reach to fifty milliamps so in this case the pulse width of the gate signal should be greater than that value which is 5.25 over 18 microsecond so this is pulse width for gate signal